Welcome back. Uh, right now we're going to look at how you journalize in the cash receipts journals. And what I want you to remember is that the cash receipts journal is used only when your company receives cash. Doesn't matter what it's for, if it receives cash, it has to go in the cash receipts journal. So your source documents for this journal most of the time is going to be a receipt, but every now and then you will have a cash register tape for your weekly cash sales. So the first thing I'd like you to do is go to your documents and go to your F drive where you saved your chapter 16 problems in that folder. I want you to go to problem 16.5 and we're going to open that up. And when you do, I want you to make sure that you're on the tab that says cash receipts journal at the bottom. There is a sales journal, but we're not going to use that one. Um, at this time. So what I want to do is direct your attention to the very top of the cash receipts journal. The one thing that is always a given if you have cash receipts is that your cash in bank is going to be debited. So we do have a special column that says cash in bank debited. This column every time you use the cash receipts journal has to always 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 have a number in it. Okay so for every transaction you have to debit cash and bank if you're using the cash receipts journal. So let's look at the titles across the top. We have a date column again. We have a document number which most of the time is going to be your receipt number. If it's a tape number you'll use a capital T. The account name. Now this is a little different than the sales journal because if you have a column that has an account name on it you do not have to write it here. So we would have um, if we have a sale that's on account, we would just put the person's name here, how much the sale was, how much the sales tax was that we charged them, if we did charge them any, and the total amount that the account receivable owes us. Okay, so in this particular case, the account receivable is going to be paying. So what I'd like you to do, and I will um, give you just a couple of minutes, I want you to get your textbooks out and I want you to turn to page 445. Hit pause on the bottom of your screen until you have that done. Okay, now that you have your textbook open, what I want you to do is look at the very bottom on page 445. Problem 16.5 says Rivers Edge Canoe and Kayak uses special journals and accounts receivable subsidiary ledger for recording business transactions. The accounts receivable subsidiary ledger accounts and certain general ledger accounts are included in your working papers. That would be in Excel. The current account balances are recorded in the accounts and if you click to your general ledger you can see that we've got um, balances in there for you already. Okay, all right, so turn the page. And at the top of page 446, I want to emphasize that the instructions at the top in this chapter become very important because it tells you exactly what to do step by step so that you don't get confused. So what we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to look at how do you record journal entries in the cash receipts journal. And again, just like the sales journal, it's going to save you a lot of time and effort when you're doing your journal entries because most of this is going to be able to be put on one line. Sometimes you have multiple line entries but that doesn't happen very often. So what I'd like to do is look at the very first instruction. It says record the transactions on page 7 in the cash receipts journal. So up here at the very top, let's make sure we're on text. We're going to make that page 7 and we're going to go over here to the date. We'll put in the year 2014 and the month we're going to work with is May and the first date is the second. So taking a look at your book it says you received $400 from Paul Drake to apply to his account receipt 505. So if you get confused what you need to do is you need to ask yourself if I was still using the general journal what would I debit and what would I credit? And you would tell me that you would debit accounts receivable because you're receiving money 
and you would credit, I mean, I'm sorry, you would debit cash and bank, and you would credit accounts receivable Paul Drake for 400 So what we're going to do is our document number is going to be receipt 505. So we're going to type R for receipt 505. And for account name, I told you, you do not have to put accounts receivable anymore because you have a column right here that says it's for accounts receivable. All you have to do is put the name. So we're going to put Paul Drake in there. Posting reference, we're going to skip for right now because we're not posting. General credit, the only time you use that column is when the account that you want to credit is something other than sales, sales tax payable, or accounts receivable. So whatever your credit is, if it's not one of these three, I'll highlight those for you so that you can see them. If it's not one of these three accounts, then you're going to use the general credit column. But in this case, Paul Drake is paying on his account, so he is an account receivable. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the amount right here in the accounts receivable credit column for 400. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a formula in here. Now you're going to have to follow along and make note of this if you want to. So we're going to type equals. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on general credit, even though there's nothing in there, click on that, plus sales credit, plus sales tax payable credit, plus accounts receivable credit, minus sales discount debit. And when you hit enter, you should get 400. So again, if you want to pause the video, you can pause it and take a look up here. You can see what I did, or you can rewind it and see what's going on. So from here on, all I have to do is copy this down, and my formula is going to stay in there. Okay? So again, we've done everything on one line that would have taken us three lines before. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this line, this single line. So if you want to do the same thing, it's kind of... Um, annoying. All you have to do is click on it till you get the little round circles at either end and hit delete. And then I think I'm just going to move that out a teeny bit. Okay, so the next date is the 5th. We're going to hit tab. This one says you received $2,940 from Adventure River Tours in payment of their $3,000 account less a 2% cash discount of $60 receipt 506. So what we're going to do here is we are going to put in receipt R506. And you have to ask yourself, what would you debit? What would you credit? Again, you would debit cash. Um, the other thing you're going to debit is your sales discount. And you're going to credit accounts receivable Adventure Tours. So since Adventure River Tours is an account receivable, we do not need to put accounts receivable in there. We're going to tab over to accounts receivable and we're going to put 3,000 in there, the original amount. We're going to put 60 in here. And now, if you did your formula correctly, they should be paying you um, the 3,000 minus the 60. So if I go up here and it's kind of hard to get that copied down you get 2,940, okay? So again, that entry would have taken us four lines if we included the source document. We did it in one, okay? The next one says on the 7th, we sold old shelving store equipment for $50, receipt 507. So we're going to type 507, oops, R 507. Now, this time the debit would be store equipment, and they put that in parentheses in bold so that you could see it. Store equipment does not have a heading here. That's when we're going to use this general column, the general credit column. So what we're going to do is we're going to type store equipment, and that would be our credit because we're selling it, and it's going to be for $50. And then we're going to tab over here, and again, you're going to copy down, and there's your 50 Okay, 
So what I'm going to do is have you guys hit pause. And um, I want you to try and finish the other problems on your own. You should be able to use a little bit of um, educated guessing, if you will, or use your textbook and finish the rest of the problem. And then when you're done, you can turn this back on. Okay, so now you're finished. And uh, what I'd like you to do is if you want to, again, hit pause so that you can look at my screen. And I want you to look at a couple of things. First of all, here's your cash register tape. This should be T20 um, for both of them. And here's two more T21s. You're just going to put cash sales in here. Remember how before we put CS for our explanation? To separate between cash sales and bank card sales, you're going to actually type it in there. Okay? You're still going to use your sales credit column, sales tax payable, and then over here would be your totals. So go ahead, take a couple of minutes, check your work, make sure it's correct. When you finish checking your work, what I'd like you to do is close this lesson. And then what we're going to do is we're going to move on to posting from the special journals. So the next thing you're going to open is posting to the sales journal.